Hi guys. Is anyone here? Um, sorry about that. We originally were going to post this on a different link, but there were some technical difficulties. So if I look a little sweaty right now, it's because I was running around my room trying to plug my laptop in, but we got it figured out. We are sewing a summer dress today. So, um, I'm just going to give it a minute and wait for people. Oh, people are joining. Hi guys, so sorry if you were on our other link, we had to switch things up very last minute. So I just ran around the house trying to get this together, but we're here. People are talking to me. Hello, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for sticking with us with the last minute switch, but we are here to make a summer dress and this is it. So, um, while I wait for some more people to join, let me just tell you a little bit about myself and what we're making. So my name is Jessica Shaw and uh, I've been sewing for four years now. And um, I, I still consider myself such a beginner though. I mean, I mess up every single time I sew and that's just part of the journey. That's part of the fun. Um, and I originally started sewing um, yeah, four years ago when my grandma just kind of taught me just like the basics and she is the sweetest little Portuguese lady and um, she grew up in the Azores and so they used to make like bras and underwear out of bed sheets and I just thought that is the most amazing thing. I want to learn how to do that. So I started learning and then I pretty much learned everything that I know now from the internet. So yeah that's been the journey um thank you guys so much for joining again we had to do a last minute switch from the old link but we're here now so this is the dress that we're making today it is this adorable little summer dress very lightweight so simple one of the easiest dresses i've ever made and it has these cute little ties on the back. So this dress was, an, was originally inspired by this pattern that I bought from Common Stitch, which is an Australian based pattern company. And they make um, really simple, easy to make patterns. So that's, this kind of looks like the same dress, but I promise it's not. Well, let me show you what's different. So. I made this about a week ago um, and the neckline is just like very wide on this one and I don't think it's very flattering. So I ended up making my own pattern for this dress and I made the neckline like two inches more narrow and then I also changed the dart placement. So if you can see these little darts right here, they're pretty high up and I just thought they looked a little funky right there. Maybe they did that for a reason, but I wanted to change the dart placement. So for my dress, oh my gosh, for my dress, I uh, put one dart right here and then on the other side. So a little bit lower, I feel like it's in a little bit more of a flattering spot. So those were the changes that I made. And I'm about to show you in just a minute. Um, oh. Uh, sorry, I'm getting distracted by the comments. Um, I'm gonna show you in just a minute how I made this pattern. It was so simple, I promise. It takes like maybe 10 minutes. So, um, and yeah, if you guys have any questions, please comment. I'm gonna be looking at the chat box regularly and I'll try to answer any questions that you guys might have. But again, I am still such a beginner and I'm learning every day. So if any of you viewers no answers to any of the questions then feel free to jump in and answer questions but yeah it's gonna be a good time so okay 
one other thing to note uh, is we're splitting this up between three days. So today I'm going to show you how I make the pattern and then we're going to just start cutting the fabric. Tomorrow we're going to start sewing and then on Thursday we're going to finish sewing. So join back at 2 p.m. Central Time, um, Wednesday and Thursday, and we'll finish sewing it. So, who's ready to get started? If anybody's following along, then here are some things that you'll need to make this dress. It's so simple. Um, you will need one, hold on, let me grab my list. <laughs> you will need some pattern paper, because again, we're gonna draw a pattern for this. You will need some measuring devices. So, get yourself two inch by 18 inch clear ruler is one of the best purchases I've made in my sewing career. And then you'll also need a little floppy measuring tape because we're going to be taking our body measurements. You will need scissors, pin, pins, and Taylor's chalk. So I use Taylor's chalk all the time when I'm sewing. It's just a super easy way to make little marks on the clothing and it rubs off if you ever make a mistake. You'll need a sewing machine and you'll need thread. And the last thing you'll need is um, 1.3 yards of 60 inch wide fabric. Now let me show you the fabric I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using this polyester blend. It's like a polyester microfiber blend, so it's super soft and it doesn't stretch. If you're a beginner, I would definitely recommend using fabrics that don't stretch. So look for things like cotton, or linen is always a great one. Um, this fabric here is Tencel, which is also one of my favorite fabrics. It is, um, it's considered a sustainable fabric because it originally comes from the cellulose of wood pulp. So it's a natural fiber fabric. And um, it's really soft, it's good for the environment, and it's really easy to work with because it doesn't stretch. So it's sturdy and it's great. So we're going to be using this polyester blend though. This one's a little bit heavier than this one behind me, but still a great summer dress. Is your fabric selection lightweight? Yes. So look out for fabrics that are light to medium weight. So these are really great for summer dresses and also look for fabric that drapes well. So light to medium weight fabric will drape well and drape is Drape is this, it's just how something like flows off your body and it's not like clinging to your body, you know, if that makes sense. So look out for light to medium weight fabrics for this project. Okay, is there anyone actually following along with me? I would love to know. So comment below if you're following along and I'll make sure to slow down on some parts if you need more explanation, but yeah, let's just get right. Oh, Danny is following along. I am so happy you're following along. Um, all right, who's ready to get started? Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is take three body measurements. We're gonna need our bust measurement, our waist measurement, and our hip measurement. So we are, um, gonna first measure the bust. And this is such an awkward thing to do on camera, but um, you wanna measure the widest part of your bust. So if there are any ladies watching that is, never mind, I'm not gonna get into that, but you know the widest part of your bust. So that's the part you're gonna wanna measure. And when you're taking body measurements, you don't want it to be super tight, but you also don't want it to be too loose. So just like a good natural fit, and that is your best measurement. Also, grab a piece of paper right now. And you're gonna wanna write down these measurements. So my bust is 36 inches. If you wanna use my measurements for reference, I'm usually a sewing size 10, sometimes a size 12. And remember, sewing sizes are very different than regular sizes. I definitely made that mistake once. I cut out like a size six and it was like <laughs> tiny. So um, someone just said it's 1 a.m. Where, where you're at. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm sorry that tomorrow it'll also be at 1 a.m. but I hope you can still join. 
Okay, so now we're gonna take our waist measurement. So all you have to do is find your belly button and it's two inches above that. And that is your natural waist. So go ahead and take your waist measurement. Mine is 30 inches. And then the last measurement we need are our hips. So this is the widest part of your hips. This might be like your butt area, it might be above your butt, it's just the widest part. So find that part, measure it, minus 40 inches. So yeah, if you wanna use my sizes to make this, if you're also a sewing size 10, then you can go ahead and skip the measuring part. I'm also five foot seven inches, um, and this dress is, it's a little bit short. My mom said it was too short, so that's when you know it's probably too short, but if you want it to be any longer than this, then definitely add more length to your 1.2 yards of fabric. Um, one sec. Okay, is the 30 inches after the two inches added? No. Oh, I'm sorry, did I make that confusing? So the two inches is just above your belly button and that's how you get your natural waist. So, oh, I would back up, but it's difficult. So my belly button's here. I'm gonna measure right here to get my waist measurement. So go ahead and measure that. Okay, now that we have those three measurements, we're gonna do it just, sorry about that. Okay, we're gonna do just a little bit of math. Can anyone see me? Okay, we're back. So we're gonna divide those three numbers by four. Why are we dividing this by four? Let me explain. Let me grab my pattern. I already made a pattern for this, but I'm also gonna do it with you. So the pattern is really half of my front, which means there are four pieces. So it'd be one, two, three, four. So we're gonna divide it by four because we're only drawing a fourth of the body of the pattern. Does that make sense? So we're gonna divide those numbers by four. So my bust divided by four is nine inches. My waist divided by four is seven and a half inches. And then my hips divided by four is 10 inches. Got it? So be sure to write those numbers down. We're gonna refer back to that in just a minute. Okay, now we're gonna draw the pattern. For this, I'm gonna move my camera. We're gonna do a little rearranging here. Don't mind me. We've had enough technical difficulties for one day. <laughs> but where else, is, where else um, are all of you guys from? I would love to hear, comment down below where you're from. Are you in the United States? Are you watching from somewhere else? Um, Okay, this, we're gonna make this work. Arizona, nice. Okay, can we all see this? Okay. We're just gonna work with this weird camera angle. Virginia, California, okay. All right, so I have my pattern paper here and I made sure that it's like 31 inches long. Just give yourself enough room to draw this dress because it's it's gonna end up being about 31 inches long. Okay. So one moment. Alright, so I'm gonna grab a Sharpie and I'm gonna grab my measuring tape or my measuring, my ruler, this is a ruler. Okay, the first line that we're gonna draw, I'm gonna just draw it and then I'll bring it closer to the camera so you can see it, um, is our neckline. And all I did to figure this out, I literally just held a ruler up to myself because you see our girl has this straight neckline. So we just want that narrow, straight neckline. So I just held this ruler up and I wanted it nine inches. So nine divided by two is Four and a half so that's our neckline so we're gonna make this as long as it's straight this edge of the paper 
as long as it's straight, that can be your center front. If it's not straight, you're going to want to make it straight because always find your 90 degree angles in sewing. That is the most important thing. So I'm going to use this as the center front of my pattern and the center front runs down the center of the front of your body. So we're going to mark four and a half inches in and make it a straight line. Oh, got a little wobbly. Okay. Oh my gosh. You know what? I'm going to scratch that. I'm going to do a new line. I'm so sorry. There's a lot of pressure right now. Okay, so we're just going to ignore that top one. <laughs> and so we're going to name this point A and this point B. Just write point A and B. Okay, now we're going to get the center of our bust written down. So just make a line from point B down um, five inches. So this should be a 90 degree angle, guys. So important. So five inches, and that will be the center of our bust. Okay, now this part, my hair is just wild. I'm telling you, I just had a crazy afternoon getting these cameras set up. Okay, so let's talk about ease real quick. One moment. Okay, so ease is so important in pattern making. What is ease? Also, there's Sharpie all over my hands. Ease is what makes something what am I trying to say? It's not skin tight. This dress is just hanging off the body. It's draping nicely. There's some wiggle room here. That's what ease is. It's wiggle room. So we need to add this wiggle room onto our pattern. It's flow. Yes. Thank you, Heidi. Okay. So we're going to add some flow onto this pattern. So you need to think about this. We're going to add, how much are we going to add? We're going to add half an inch ease to our bust, we're gonna add two and a half inches of ease to our waist, and then we're gonna add one inch of ease to our hip. And that should make it, that should make it a shift dress to where it kind of just flows straight down, but it, it has like a tiny bit of flare. So we are gonna take our bust measurement now. Let's refer to our paper. Our bust was nine inches, remember? So we are gonna do a horizontal line, nine inches, and add half an inch for ease. So I'm gonna draw this line. Also mark the center of your bust, that is point C. Okay, so I'm gonna make a horizontal line going from the center front. It's gonna go through point C, and it's gonna go across nine and a half inches. Now this depends on whatever your bust measurement was. So nine and a half. My ruler's backwards. <laughs> okay, nine and a half. So say your bust was, say your bust is 40 inches. You would have divided that by four, so where it's 10, and then you would have add you would add half an inch for ease, so ten and a half. There you go. So now we got our bust. So we're gonna label that point D. And I'm also just gonna write bust, just so we know. Okay. So yours should look something like this. Now we're going to mark where our waist is. So everyone, no matter what your measurements are, mark from point B. We're going to go all the way down by 10 inches, and that should be where all of our waists fall. So we're going to do a vertical line 10 inches down. Okay. 10 inches. And our waist will be right there. Now, now what are we doing? 
Okay, now we're gonna do the horizontal waistline. So, okay, sorry. Okay, this is also E, that point was E. Okay, now we're gonna do a horizontal line. So now we have to calculate again. Our waist measurement divided by four plus the two and a half inches for ease. So my waist was seven and a half, and then I'm gonna add two and a half inches for ease, which is 10. So we're gonna do a vertical line, no, a horizontal line, 10 inches. I'm so sorry, guys. Are there ever some words that you just mix up for your entire life? I mix up oven and stove and vertical and horizontal almost every week, and I don't know why, but I can never learn. Okay, so that is gonna be point F. And this is our waist. Here we go. Are you following along? It's starting to look like something. Okay, now we are almost done. We are gonna mark where our hips are. So go to your waist, which was point E, and we're gonna mark um, nine inches down. And this is standard for pattern making. Your waist and your hip is usually nine inches away from each other. So we're gonna go from point E and mark nine inches. And that is point G. So this is where our hip is. Now we'll draw our horizontal line of your hip measurement divided by four plus one inch for ease. So my hip was, oh, this is a lot of calculation. My hip was 10 inches, and then I'm gonna add one inch for ease. So we're gonna do 11 inches across. All right. Okay, and that will be point H. So, the very last thing we have to draw is the hemline. So this is gonna be, from point E, this will be 18 inches down um, vertically. So, everyone mark 18 inches down, but of course, if you want the dress to be longer than mine, then maybe add an inch or two, but I think 18 is just fine. So from point E, we're gonna mark 18 inches down. And that is our hem. So I'm just gonna draw a, um, hold on. Okay, and then I'm gonna draw a horizontal line. Sorry, this is so complicated. I'm drawing a horizontal line, whatever my hip was, plus another inch for ease. So my hip was 10 inches. No, it was my hip ended up being 11 inches. So I'm gonna add an inch to that. So whatever point H was, just add another inch to that. And that will be your hemline, the edge of the dress. Okay, so now we have what looks like a dress. Does this look like a dress? I think it does. So now we're just going to connect our lines. So we're going to connect B to D, D to F, F to H, and H to I. So just draw, just draw a couple lines there. Here we go, that's gonna be our armpit part, the slanty part. D to F to H and and down to the hemline. So guys, we just made a dress pattern. This is gonna be the front of our dress. Now, Okay, now we need to add seam allowance. So this is very easy. Um, all you have to do is think about, first of all, what 
your seam allowance is gonna be. This can be different for everyone. Some people prefer 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, some people prefer um, half an inch. Some people even do a fourth of an inch if they don't wanna waste that much fabric. Um, I typically use a half inch or 5 eighths of an inch. Also think about, are you gonna be doing any sort of like French seams? Because if you are, then you're gonna to wanna to leave at least a fourth, no, you should probably just leave a half an inch if you're gonna be doing a French seam, which we will be doing tomorrow. So, um, the other thing you have to think about is how much room you need to leave for everything. So for the bottom, we're gonna just leave an inch to hem it. On the sides, we're gonna add a half, a half an inch for seam allowance. And then on the top, we're gonna do a, an inch and a half hem. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw those lines real quick. Can everyone see this? Maybe I'll move it a little. If you guys are following along, how's it going? Is everything making sense? Are you confused? Are you stuck? Leave a comment. Danny's doing good. I feel like this is a little sewing club we have going here. Okay, so I'm gonna add half an inch to the side for seam allowance. I found that half an inch is, if you're drawing your own patterns, I like to add half an inch. Um, because it, it just makes it so much easier. Then you don't have to think about five eighths. There's just a lot to calculate. That's too much math. So half an inch is the easiest for me. Here we go. And I'm also gonna add half an inch to my little diagonal armpit part. There we go. Okay, and then for the top, we're hemming it by one and a half inches, but just trust me here and add two inches. Somehow it just works on this pattern just to do two inches instead of one and a half. I don't know why, but it does. <laughs> so add two inches to the top and then you're gonna connect it right there to B. Okay, hold on a minute. Okay. Sorry, things are getting a little wonky up here at the top. I'm just gonna draw some lines here so we know what the seam allowance was, just so we remember. Okay, so this is all going to be seam allowance. Now, the other thing I'm going to do before we're done with the front is draw a straight line here. And I'm going to put two little lines on each end. And this is just going to let us know to cut it on the fold. Remember, we have to cut this on the fold because the front of the dress is one piece. So I'll just write fold here. And that's about it. Now we can start cutting it out. Wow, Amy, thank you so much for the sweet comment. Sorry for these changing camera angles. Um, so get your paper scissors. Always get in the habit of using different scissors for paper and fabric because using fabric scissors on paper will actually dull them. So don't be using your fabric scissors on paper. Okay, so now we're just going to cut this out. Um, I always wanted to start a sewing club with my friends. And, um, oh, anytime. And, um, you know, most people that sew these days, which if you guys are under the age of 60, then good job because sewing is starting to become a lost art and that makes me so sad. So 
you know, I'm always like, hey, let's start a sewing club and nobody's ever interested. So this feels like the closest thing to that 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 we've that I've ever had. So thank you for that. Okay, we're just cutting out this pattern. I don't know why I'm doing this on my lap. <laughs> thank you to someone's grandma. Okay. Um also, in just a minute, we're going to be using this front of the dress. Um, oh, yes. Someone just said during lockdown, sewing has become more popular, and that makes me so happy. I'm not surprised. You know, everyone's stuck at home. They want to learn new hobbies. They're bored. Lockdown has made me question things that I've never questioned before, you know, like... I don't know. It just really makes you evaluate your life and your goals and all of that. So I'm so happy that people want to learn how to sew. Things got a little funky here on mine. <laughs> What's going on here at the top? Okay, well, good thing I made an actual pattern. This is just a test run. Um, so yours should look a little bit better than mine. Okay, so. We're actually going to use this um, front dress piece to make our back dress piece. So, um, so that is great. That makes things so much easier for us. So I'm going to go ahead and grab another piece of pattern paper. One moment. Okay, so grab a plain piece of pattern paper. We're gonna lay our front of the dress right on top. Sorry. Okay. We're laying our dress right on top and we're actually just gonna trace the entire thing, but end it right here. Sorry, this fan, really got a fan going here. Okay, we're gonna end it at point. This is not going well. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna end it at point D. It should end right at this like armpit part, so it'll come down, and then the back will start right there. So trace it all around, and then once you get to point D, you're just gonna do a straight across line. So, um, let me get my ruler. How many people are not following along? Now I feel bad doing this. If you're just watching, um, we could talk about darts. Cheryl's following along. Okay, so in just a minute, we are going to add a dart to the front of the dress, which, don't get nervous, it sounds really intimidating, but um, darts are not that scary. I suppose they could be, depending on your technique. But darts are essential, guys. I used to think, what is the point of a dart? And I used to think it's a waste of time. They're complicated. I used to think they were ugly, but now I think they're beautiful and they're so helpful. They really help accentuate the curves of the body. And they're really not that hard to make. Okay, I'm almost done here. Trace it. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, I traced all the way up to point D, and then I'm going to take that off and just draw a horizontal line. And that is where our back will end. And remember, we already added seam allowance, so you won't need to add seam allowance really at all. If you want, since we didn't add seam allowance on the fold, because it's a fold, we did not add seam allowance here. So if you want, 
to add seam allowance here, you can. I actually didn't, and I feel like the dress turned out really great. Because um, really the back can be a little bit smaller than the front. The front just has so much more going on than the back. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so now we can cut that up. I'm actually going to skip this part because I already made a beautiful pattern. This was just guiding you guys, so I'm going to skip that part. And, well, if you're following along, I'll give you a minute, but we are going to add a bust dart to this pattern that we made. So, yeah, on this dress, I'll show you again. On this dress, we have the dart here. Yes, I did. I put a bra on this mannequin yesterday. I thought she just, she needs a bra and she just looks so much better. I feel like things fit better now, but I've never seen someone put a bra on their mannequin. Okay, so our bust starts are here. And if you look, the center of the bust is right here. Um, <laughs> okay, so the center of the bust is there. And our dart ends just an inch before that. So this was one thing I used to do really, really wrong. I, um, <laughs> mine did not have a built-in bra, I promise you. I got home and I was like, she got gypped a little bit, but she's all, she's beautiful either way, but I just felt like she needed a bra. Anyway, so um, ending bust starts not at the center of your bust is crucial because when I used to make darts, I would have them end like, you know, right there. And it just... It brings too much attention. It's like deer in the headlights and you don't want that. Especially if your dart puckers a little bit, it kind of just looks funny. So always end your dart a little bit in by like an inch from the center. Yes, they do. They do look like extra nipples. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that on here? Probably not. Okay, so. Also, our dart is going to go in. It's just four inches long. So that's like a typical dart size. So let's go back to our pattern here, knowing all of that. And let's remember that C was the center of our bust. So we're gonna want the dart to end one inch before that. And we're actually just gonna put the dart right here. So from D to, let me get an accurate measurement for you one inch okay so our dart is going to end right here there we go now we are going to grab a little tiny scrap of paper i have one right here just grab a scrap of paper to anybody who's just joining welcome um yeah, we are sewing a summer dress today and this is going to be split up into three parts. So today I'm drawing the pattern and then we're just going to start cutting it. I'm not going to cut the whole, the whole thing. And then tomorrow, if you want to join us again at 2 p.m. Central Time, we're going to be sewing it. And then Thursday, we're going to finish sewing it. So it's going to be a great time. So you're going to take this scrap of paper and get some tape. Now, on the back side, I'm not doing a great job reading these comments. Okay. Things are going good. How are you guys following along? Danny, are you still with us? Cheryl? Okay, so we're going to take this scrap of paper and fold it upside down and tape it. We're going to tape it right around where we just drew that little dart on the other side. I'm going to tape it close to that center front line. We just need it. I'll show you why we need it. Okay, so now things are getting real technical. I hope you can see this. We're going to take our scissors. Okay, we're going to not drop them. We're going to cut a line from from point D to that end of our, the end of our dart. So 
I think they call that the apex. So we're gonna draw, or we're gonna cut just through our first layer. Just cut a line from D to the end of our dart. Okay, now we're gonna want our dart to be one inch. So how can I show you this? Okay, here is what the underside of a dart looks like. Let's show you, okay. Looks like this. So this is also a one inch dart. See, so there's one inch there and then there was one inch on the other side. So, I mean, sorry, half an inch on this side, half an inch on the other side. So that's one full inch. So now we are going to spread this apart like this see this we're gonna spread it apart by one inch and make it even so half an inch on each side so I'm gonna pull the top up by half an inch and I'm gonna tape it so tape it in place and now I will fold if you want to grab a measuring tape and be real precise you should do that. Okay, now I'm gonna, sorry. Okay, I'm also gonna draw a line right here, or just a little dot from my starting point. I forgot to do that. Just so we know that we're spreading it the right amount. Okay, so I'm gonna spread this side out by half an inch, and I'm gonna tape it. I hope you guys all understood that. I don't know if I did a great job explaining that. Let me show you an up close, but first I'm gonna draw some lines real quick. So I'm just gonna draw a vertical line through the middle. Okay, so your dart should look like this. Now this method, I'm not really sure if this is exactly the slash and spread method of putting a dart in. It might just be my own version, but it worked for this pattern and I'm sure it'll work for you as well. So um, slash and spread because you slash it with some scissors and then you spread it open and then tape it. So see, we spread each side open by half an inch, making one full inch for the dart. And there you go. So we just added a dart. And if your pattern bunches up a little bit or kind of like bulges out just a little bit, you're just gonna wanna try to press it as flat as it will go. And if it helps, you can even trace this onto a new piece of paper um, just to get really accurate lines. But um, yeah, so we just took a two-dimensional pattern and made it three-dimensional by adding a dart. And that's an amazing thing. <laughs> so, um, if you want to take, we are almost done with this dart, guys. Grab a pen, and I'm just gonna um, trace. Hold on a minute. Okay. I'm just gonna trace the outside of my pattern here. And then once you get to the end, we're just going to connect these lines. So just do a straight line, and there you go. That should work. So we're just going to add some lines there, and then cut it out. Okay, so now we have a dart. Usually it lays a little more flat. I hope yours is laying more flat. Work of art. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so now we have our dart and we have our back bodice piece or our back dress piece. We have our front. The only thing left are the straps, which I'm not actually gonna draw a pattern for. I'll just give you the dimensions. So. 
Um, if you want to make this at home, then we're going to make a long strap. And the straps are, come here, she's a little too tall for us right now. Let's just move this up. Okay, so these straps are three, what are these straps? Three fourths of an inch wide. There you go, three fourths of an inch. And the long strap is 40 and a half inches long. And then the short strap, which goes in the back, I guess I didn't really show you this, but the short strap connects to the back of the dress right here. This one is nine inches long. So adding seam allowance and everything, you're going to cut your long strap two and a half inches wide by 41 and a half inches long. And then your short strap is going to be two and a half inches wide by 10 inches long. Should I say that one more time? <laughs> Are you guys writing this down? Um, so the long strap, two and a half by 41 and a half inches and the short strap, two and a half by 10 inches. So once we cut our fabric, I'm just going to take my Taylor's chalk and mark that. I'm not going to draw a pattern for it. So that is pattern making. We ended up with some Sharpie. I hope that made sense. Um, All right, I don't know what super chat is. Next time, can you super chat? Thank you, thank you. Okay, so we're gonna do just one last thing before I end this live, and then I really hope you guys can join us tomorrow when we start sewing it. Um, we're just gonna kind of just start cutting the pattern pieces, and I'm gonna show you just a few tips for cutting uh, patterns. So, let me clear off my table. Also, look out for a scheduled live for tomorrow's video because we had technical difficulties. We had to cancel the scheduled live. So I really hope everyone that was trying to make it was able to make it today. But if not, there will be a scheduled live and we'll post it on the Singer Instagram if you want to. Uh, if you want to RSVP and join. And um, yeah, also I'll mention real quick, if any of y'all want to follow my YouTube channel, it's Jessica Shaw. I make sewing tutorials. I, um, yeah, I made, I made a dress recently. I made a loungewear set and it's just a lot of fun. Um, on Instagram, Jessica Shaw. I'd love to connect with you guys and it's just, uh, the sewing world is, is small, but we are tight, and <laughs> so that's, that's a good thing. Okay, so I'm going to lay out my fabric. Here we go. Now, before you start, before you start cutting your fabric, it's very important to identify just a few brief things. <laughs> um, so... You'll need to find, first of all, you'll need to find the selvage edge. So let's look at this fabric. Let's find it. It's here somewhere. The selvage edge is the finished edge of the fabric. And um, it's, sometimes there's like a little strip printed, but it just, it looks tight and it looks finished. Sometimes there's little holes punctured through it, which mine has. Um, which is actually a secret little tip for figuring out what the wrong and right side of your fabric is. So say this fabric is, I mean, this fabric looks the same on the wrong and the right side. So then you're like, well, which one's the wrong, which one's the right? And a little tip, if you look at these little punctured holes, um, woven fabrics will sometimes have this. The punctured holes, this is where the fabric is punctured onto the loom when the fabric is made. So the, the holes that are flat and smooth, this should be the right side of the fabric. And then the holes that are like poking out and like protruding, this would be the wrong side of the fabric. So that's how I determined which one was the wrong and the right side. So now we know the selvage edge, we know which is the wrong and the right side. The only other thing we need to, we need to identify is the grain of the fabric. So 
we're talking about woven fabrics here. If you're working with a stretch fabric, it's all a different ball game, but woven fabrics like cotton, linen, polyester, you know, things like that, um, will have a certain grain. So the straight grain is called the warp and it runs lengthwise down the body usually. So patterns will usually have, where's my little pattern? Okay, well patterns will usually have an arrow on it saying cut it to where the straight grain is running down your body. And the warp runs, okay, let me think, parallel to the selvage edges. So if you have your fabric folded in half, the selvage will be here, the straight grain or the warp will be here. Selvage is there. So the, the warp does not stretch, it's just like it's straight and it, it also just drapes well down the body so that's why a lot of patterns will have you cut on the straight grain. The cross grain, also called the weft, which a little trick for this, weft sounds like left and the weft goes left to right. So this has just a little bit more stretch than the straight grain and this typically runs across your body. And um, yeah, it just kind of helps since it has a little bit of give, it kind of goes, goes around curves a little bit better and it accentuates the body a little bit better. So that is the cross grain. And then there's the bias, which runs diagonally across the fabric and this has the most stretch so this is actually the best going around curves and some um, pieces will actually have you cut it on the bias and this just really flatters the body and it drapes really beautifully down the body so we are only going to be cutting on the straight grain today all that to say so i'm going to lay my fabric out My fabric is folded in half, and I like to I like to fold it um, wrong side no right sides together. <laughs> okay, I like to fold it right sides together, and this is because then if we want to make markings with like Taylor's chalk, it'll be on the wrong side and it won't ruin everything. So it is folded wrong sides together, and my selvage edges. Are together. Okay. Lay this out. There we go. I need a pattern weight. I'm a big fan of using household objects as pattern weights. I think pattern weights were the biggest waste of $10 that I ever spent because you can literally use anything as a pattern weight. Okay, let me grab my patterns. Okay, so remember when we drew this little line here and said cut it on the fold? We need to remember that and actually place it on the fold. The fold is here. I'm placing that on the fold. And then on the back bodice, I drew a line here saying this is the grain line that we need to cut it on the straight grain. So I'm going to lay that one down. And then this is the point when I would take my Taylor's chalk and I would make little marks for the straps. Remember, we're doing two and a half inches wide by 41 and a half inches long for the big strap. So I would just take my little tailor's chalk, I'd mark that, and then I would do the big vertical line. Again, I'm not gonna do all this right now because we are running out of time. It's already been almost an hour. Okay, wow. I feel like the consistent amount of people have stayed with us this whole time. And thank you so much for being here. Um, yeah, so this is the point when I would just cut my patterns out. Make sure your fabric is wrinkle-free because that will give you the best cuts possible. Cutting is such a crucial part in sewing. Um, always measure twice, cut once, because you can never take back something that you cut wrong. 
always leave more room than you need um, and get yourself some good fabric scissors um, yeah so come wait well, I'm getting some oh oh you know wow okay we have a a holder thank you so much for your comment she made you made a great point that I put these pieces upside down from each other and that would be bad if you had a patterned fabric because then your pattern would be going this way on one piece and this way on the other and we don't want that so good job for noticing that I told you I make mistakes every time I sew okay it has been a great hour um, I will see you guys tomorrow same time two o'clock it should be a scheduled live and feel free to follow my youtube channel instagram jessica shaw and i will see you guys tomorrow i think that's everything okay bye guys how do i end this